Welcome back to Hearn Family Homestead. I'm Amanda and I thought I'd take you on a little tour of our garden this morning and show you how things are doing. We had a huge windstorm last night and we got some rain which we really needed um, but the wind was just crazy. It blew some of the peas off the trellis and we were getting emergency alerts on our phones and everything. It was uh, expecting 60 mile an hour wind gusts and I believe it, it was blowing pretty pretty bad. I've got a little tiny peach tree that's about two years old and I was a little worried about it. It was bending over quite a ways but we had it staked up. As we come into the garden I've got some volunteer sunflowers over here and we've got spinach that's spent but I'll probably save seed from that. A few little peppers over here. One I think the slugs got and the other one you can see that one I think the slugs got and the other one I wanted to isolate just so I could save seeds. Here's some more volunteer sunflowers along the fence and some boards that we were using to hold the sides of the garden beds together last year. And these are the Swiss chard that have gone to seed. At the base of the Swiss chard we've got our bunching onions. I expect them to do better after the Swiss chard is out where they can get a little more sunlight. Next we have our eggplant. There were four. The slugs got one of them. The other three are doing okay. And then we've got our long row of onions which are looking awesome. And at the edge of the garden over there, that's actually a, most people consider it a weed. It's called curly dock. It's completely edible. It volunteered so I let it go. Um, you can eat the leaves like spinach and then you can also eat the seed heads. Next we've got our long row of peas. And they're finally producing. They started putting on blooms and after that heat spell a couple weeks ago I wasn't sure that we would get any. But we're getting a good harvest off of those. At the base of the peas we've got our green beans and you can see they're looking a lot better. There's some slug damage. We'll be taking care of that when we get our diatomaceous earth in. We also have some very pretty lettuce that came up at the base of the peas. I planted this whole row and it just doesn't seem to have come up. There's a little more lettuce. And this is some sort of volunteer berry plant. I got the soil from my mom and I'll have to ask her what she's got planted in her garden because it could be raspberry or blackberry. I'm thinking probably blackberry but we will see what it develops into. I'm not going to pull it though because we like berries. I'll probably transplant it later. Just to kind of show you guys what slugs can do to a plant, this is a purple potted pole bean and they've completely eaten all the leaves off of it. You can see there's a couple slugs still on it and that's why things have so much damage is the slugs just love the cool temperatures and the moisture and they just really attack those plants. So we'll pick those guys up and feed them to the chickens. I don't expect this plant to bounce back but we have lots of bean plants. And you can see under this mulch there's just slugs everywhere. And sometimes you just have to come out and pull them off yourself. I have heard that frogs like to eat slugs as well. At the end of this row we've got our compost pile where our chickens were and we've got a little volunteer squash. We'll see what that turns out to be. Back in the corner by the compost we've got our comfrey. I use that to make comfrey tea to fertilize the garden. These sunflowers are looking gorgeous. These are ones that I planted. And here's the other side of our onions where the chickens got in on a couple videos. I showed you the damage that the chickens had done. They took these onions all the way back to the ground and they really bounced back and they're looking great now. And then we have the peppers. I left these rocks in here. They were holding the hot caps, the milk jug hot caps, onto the peppers when we had some cold weather a couple weeks ago. And I just left them here to try to capture as much of that heat as we can because peppers do like it to be nice and warm. We've got some temperatures coming in this weekend of 106 uh, to 108. I expect the peppers will love that and the tomatoes. I think it'll probably be the end for the peas. 
but it's getting late in the season now anyway, so we'll get our harvest off of them, which I am thrilled about. Here's our carrots that we let go to seed. You can see the seed heads developing pretty well on those. So we should have lots of carrot seed. And back here I sowed some summer squash. It's just starting to peek out of the ground there. And we'll see if the zucchini comes up or if the slugs got it. So this is our second bed. You can see the wind kind of did a number on my sunflower, but we did stake it up last night. So I think he should straighten out a little bit. We'll see. In these two rows we have some zinnias in the back and they're getting tall, looking good. And then we have some chamomile. My sister gave me some chamomile starts and those are looking great. I did sow some chamomile seeds but I think it just got too hot and dry for them. At the end of this trellis we've got nasturtiums and we've got our tomatoes. We have our surviving bush beans. Uh, these are jade bush beans and so we will hopefully get a good harvest off of those. I think there's five plants here. The tomatoes are looking really great. Um, most of these are indeterminate varieties and so they will need to be pruned up and I will show you how to do that real quick. Um, you want to keep all the leaves off the ground. So we'll take those bottom leaves off the ground and then you can see kind of in the corners where the leaves come out, there's suckers. So this is a sucker and you just want to snap those off and the bottom leaves off. And you want to keep it to just one central leader to grow up, which is this one right here. And so this one, he's gotten kind of big, is a sucker. So we'll take him off. And what this does is it directs the plant's energy up into this central leader. And that way it doesn't have to put energy into all these little side shoots you get bigger tomatoes this way. And you also don't have a bush that just goes everywhere with these indeterminates. They'll get pretty big around. But if you keep them pruned, then they're easier to manage. We'll do this one as well. And I'll go down this whole row in a little bit and get them all pruned up they're really starting to take off. As the tomatoes grow up you can push them through this trellis and then when they grow up the other side you can push them back through and so on and so forth all the way up this cattle panel. And these are our rows of beets, turnips, and carrots in the back. These are the ones that we thinned out on the previous video and they're really enjoying the extra room and taking off. With a small garden, I really try to use interplanting as much as possible. Here we have corn and Napa cabbage. We've started harvesting the Napa cabbage. The pest pressure was so much that it was, it was either we eat it with some holes in it or we feed it to the chickens. Not only were the slugs after it, but the um, earwigs started to come out as well. We have some pickling cucumbers coming up at the base of the corn. And the idea is that the corn will have enough of a jump start to get big and strong and then when the cucumbers start to vine they can kind of go in amongst the corn. Here's the matcha I showed you. It's going to seed. And if you'd like to go back to the first video and see the progression of this garden you can really see it go from solid wood chips to really blooming and thriving and producing food for us. There's our kale and Swiss chard, another volunteer sunflower. Looking pretty this morning. And our lettuce. This is the other end of our tomato trellis. We've got the last of the peas over here. We also have a few zinnias planted and some lettuce and things like that planted at the base where they're going to get some good shade. Back here by the back fence we've got a long row of Jerusalem artichokes and we mulched them this year and that's really helped 
keep the moisture. You can see there's some mulch down by the roots. This is our experimental bed of shelling peas and strawberries. And it really worked out well. We got a harvest off the peas and the strawberries are just starting. And this is our little two-year-old peach tree. It looks like it survived the storm all right. The trunk looks good. We did have it staked, but the stake and everything, I guess it wasn't in the ground far enough, but it was really whipping in the wind last night. I also want to show you guys our lavender bed that we've been working on. It's a project that I've had in the works for a while. And we got it in finally, and the lavender planted. And then I do have a few little carnations that we just tucked in there. I don't expect them to make it, but we'll see. What I've done with this soil is we added some sand um, for drainage and then you can see there's some perlite in there. Um, so I'm hoping that there will be enough drainage for the lavender because the lavender really, it's a Mediterranean herb and it doesn't like its roots to be wet, um, which is why I could never get it to survive before. I did some research and we put a lot of drainage uh, in this bed. We dug it really deep. And like I said, put the sand and the perlite and some vermiculite and, and then a lot of um, bagged potting mix. But hopefully the lavender will like it and it's a nice sunny spot. But I'm really excited to have lavender. With the slug pressure we've had, we've kind of gotten an opportunity to learn what works and what doesn't work for the slugs, at least in our garden. The beer traps work great. They collected a lot of slugs. Um, the diatomaceous earth was working before we ran out and we'll be getting some more today. And then I also tried um, sand. The sand deters them pretty well, but it also gets filtered down into the mulch as you water, um, which also with the diatomaceous earth and other um, top dressings, it will get filtered down and so you have to keep adding it. Another thing that we tried was wood ash. I didn't see that that made much of a difference. Um, also eggshells. Uh, I think that that works, but you have to have a lot around the base. Um, you have to really pile the eggshells high in order for that to work. One thing that I did not try is there's a product that has uh, small bits of iron. And so I haven't tried that. I'm not sure how I feel about putting iron in my garden, whether that would be good for the plants or not. Let me know if you guys know something about that. And at some point you just have to accept that there's going to be some slug damage and you can just take what you can get as with anything in gardening. So thanks for joining me today, guys. Uh, like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos and we'll catch you on the next one.